Hi, I'm Peter. And my name is Erin. And Peter, today I was thinking, it's getting really close to the holidays and I was trying to come up with um, a craft or maybe some sort of activity that we could do with our students to decorate the classroom. Okay, so what have you got on hand? So the materials we have are things like cardstock paper in different colors, we have scissors, um, a circle cutter, and some rulers. All right, so with circle cutters, obviously they cut circles. Mm -hmm. And those are fun already. So we're going to start then by creating some circles out of our cardstock. Okay, and right away looking at this, I can think of an extension for maybe older students who know how to find the area of a circle or the area of a rectangle, and they could perhaps subtract this circle to find this remaining area here. Okay, yep, that's, that's a nice extension there. Mm -hmm. And what we're actually going to do is, if you remember our from when we were learning about platonic solids, we're going to use these circles to create regular polygons. Okay. So Peter, the first shape that I'm going to try and fold into my circle here is a regular or equilateral triangle where all of the sides of the triangle are the exact same length. All right. So my first step is I'm going to fold this side over to meet this side. So folding my circle in half. So when you're folding a circle in half, what you end up with is the diameter of the circle along that fold line, right? Correct. So when I open okay. that up, we can see that it goes from this end all the way to this side of the circle here. Okay. So my next step is to also fold the top of my circle to the bottom of my circle, like so. So you now have two diameter folds. Correct. And when I open it up, we can see that those two diameters meet in the middle here. Okay, and is that the exact center of your circle or is it just kind of guessing? So this is the exact center of our circle because we know a diameter has to cross through the center of the circle. So therefore, right. where the two of them meet, this is our center. Okay. So my next step to make my equilateral triangle is I'm going to take the edge of my circle and just fold it in towards the center until the edge of my circle is touching that center point. Then I'm going to fold. Then the next thing I'm going to do is keep this folded in and take the next part of my circle here and also fold that so that the edge meets the center. And do you also want your edges to meet on the outside? Yes. Okay. So if you ever make any little mistakes, you can fix that and keep an eye out for those things as you go along. So now I have two sides folded in and as you can see, I still have one remaining part of my circle to mm -hmm. fold into the center. So once you bring that in, press down, and it can be difficult to see from this side, but when we flip it over, we can see that we've made an equilateral triangle. Okay, I have a question okay. before we move on, and that is how do we know that it's an equilateral triangle? Is there any way to check? So one way that you can get your students to prove this is by using a ruler, just making sure that they measure each of the three sides separately, and then they will realize that the length is the same on okay. each of those sides. So I have another way to check that triangle, and okay. so what we're gonna need is a pen, and we're just going to flip the triangle over, and open it up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace along the edges of our triangle here. And then you can see from the middle of our circle that the distance between the middle and any of the corners of our triangle is the radius of the circle, right? Yes. Okay, so then we'll draw our radius to two points like that, and also the third. And what happens now is you can see we have three exactly the same triangles again. Okay. Now the funny thing about these ones is that this distance here is halfway between the center of our circle and the edge. Mm -hmm. So this line, we can turn these two triangles into ones that we can use the Pythagorean theorem on. Right, because and we can prove. only use the Pythagorean theorem on right angle triangles. That's correct. And so we can prove that these two triangles are the same. Okay. And then also that this triangle is made up of those exact same two triangles and that this triangle is made up of those exact same triangles. And so then this triangle must be equilateral. Perfect. So you're saying depending on the age level of your students, you could either use a ruler to measure or you could use a proof like this. Exactly. Excellent. Okay. So. So the next shape that I would like to look at is a square. So I'm going to put my triangle to the side for now. So I'm going to take another colored circle here and I'm gonna start with the same steps once again. I'm going to fold it in half to the sides. All right, so it seems as though when we're inscribing polygons on circles that we always need to find the center of the circle. Correct, so we know we do that by folding it in half by our sides and then from the top 
to the bottom, like so. Okay. So now when I open it up, we can see once again that we have the center of our circle here. So what I'm going to do to create my square is I'm going to flip it this way so that it sort of makes an X facing me. So there's my diameter here and my diameter here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this portion of our circle's edge so that it meets this corner and this corner. So I'll show you what I mean. If I fold this down, I don't want to go anywhere past those two corners. So when I unfold here, you can see that now I have a line connecting these two corners. Mm -hmm. So I have a question before we move on about the diameters that you folded in the circle, Erin. Mm -hmm. And so my question is, in order to get this fold line here, do these diameters have to be perpendicular? So in the case of a square, they do, because the space between these two perpendicular diameters is what's going to create the equal lengths of our square. All right, thanks. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it so that I can see the other side of my X here in the middle, and then I'm just going to do the same thing where I'm folding it, where it lines up with each of these corners. All right. So I'm going to fold it down. and unfold, and then I'm going to do the same thing between these two and these two here. So as I fold down each of these corners, what we should realize is that we are going to have a square, which means that each of the side lengths is going to be the same. So once again, you could get your students to check this using a ruler mm -hmm. to ensure that this is so. So right. squares do have equal side lengths. Something also that they have is 90 degree angles in the corners, mm -hmm. and that's another thing that you can check with an angle finder. Yes, exactly. And if you ever have any instances like this where say your corners weren't exactly lined up, you can always go back to folding on this side here and just make sure that everything is folded correctly before you move on to the next step of our activity, which we're going to be going over later, correct? Yeah. So something to notice right now for all the teachers is that these flappy bits here are important and we're keeping them on the circle. Mm -hmm. So we're making these shapes, but also we're keeping the leftover bits. Yes. Okay, and so I've got one more shape that we can use okay. to make decorations, and that is a pentagon. So as we started beforehand, we're just going to find the center of the circle, and that's folding twice across the length of the circle. Now for this one, you also need perpendicular diameters, and so how we can do that is we can just fold this half into quarters right now. Okay. Right? And so at this point, it's pretty important to crease down because we're going to be using these folds a lot. And so I'm going to open it back up, and now we've found the center of our circle. Right, just like with our triangle and our square. Exactly. And so now this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold the outside of our circle into the center right along that same crease line. So we're going to line up those two lines and then crease it down. And so now we have two vertical lines and one horizontal one. And now the tricky bit is we're going to place a fold that will join the center of this crease with this edge that was folded from our diameter the first time. Okay. All right. And we can do that using a bit of landmarking. There we are. And we're just going to fold it across and open it back up. And you can see we have a new crease here. Mm -hmm. And we have this small angle here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put another fold along this line. Okay. So we're going to bisect this angle here and make that fold. Hmm. So one thing I notice right now is that you're sort of lining up with the one side of your angle here with this fold mm -hmm. to the other side of that angle. Right exactly, okay. and so that's how I know I've bisected it because I've taken both of its edges and brought them together. Okay, perfect. So when we open this up, you can see now that we have two diameter folds and we have two folds parallel to our diameters at different areas. And so something that's interesting is that from this point here, to our middle diameter fold, and from our middle diameter fold to this point is going to be two sides of our pentagon. Okay. 
But to find the other ones, what we're going to do is we're going to take this top point here, and we're going to fold the circle in half from that point. All right. So we needed to do that because now we're going to start folding the edges of our pentagon in. OK. So from here to here, we're going to fold in that edge. Things get a little bit fiddly when you've done this many folds, but we'll do our best. And just like our other shapes, if you notice that you don't quite have those exact pointy corners, you can always unfold and fold again, right? Exactly. OK. And so then we're going to do our second fold, and that's from the middle diameter, again, down to this second vertical fold that we made. Mm -hmm. And we're going to fold that point in as well, right down to there. And this is where we're going to fold our circle in half. OK, and why would we fold it in half at this point? So because our regular pentagons are symmetrical, mm -hmm. right? in order to generate our other two sides here and then our bottom, what we can do instead of doing this number of folds on the other side, we can just fold it in half and mirror. OK, perfect. And that'll save us some time, because this is complicated enough already. For sure. So when we fold in half, then I'm just going to fold this edge back until I can see the edge of my first fold there. And here we go. So that's my first edge. And then I'm going to fold this one back until I can see, again, the fold that I made. And so now we have four folds done. And we just have the last one left. So I'm going to fold this one in just like that. And now we have a pentagon. Now, it's worth knowing at this point that you could use a compass and an angle finder in the middle of this circle to do this without all the folding. So okay. if, if your students are able to follow along with the steps, that the folding is really fun. But if your students are looking for a more straightforward solution that they can use modern tools. Mm -hmm, for sure. So I see now that we have our um, regular polygon. So we have our equilateral triangle, we have our square, and then we have our regular pentagon here. Right. So Peter, do you have some examples of how we could then use these folded shapes to create some sort of decoration or ornament? In fact, I do. So right over here, I have a platonic solid made from triangles. Mm -hmm. And so you can see it has 20 triangles. And all we've done is we've taken these flappy bits and we've glued them together facing out. And we've used the face of the triangle then as the face for our solid. OK. So we also have other ones made of squares. And we have one made of pentagons here. And you can see on the pentagon one that we've put the flappy bits on the inside. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a little bit more tricky. And sometimes it takes tape along the outside edges. But it can be done. And I can see lots of opportunities here, for example, like the different textures of the paper, mm -hmm. the different patterns, colors, to make all sorts of different ornaments for our classroom. Exactly. And even you could break this down into a group activity, and each student could be responsible for one face, and they could draw their own picture on it or their own pattern. Mm -hmm. So Peter, I see here that um, we have a few examples of how we can use these folded shapes to make some of our platonic solids. So here right. we have an icosahedron, we have a cube, and then we also have a dodecahedron. So then could we use these same folded shapes to make the rest of the platonic solids? In fact, we can, and I have them here. So here we have an octahedron. You can see it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces. Mm -hmm. And I also have a tetrahedron with one, two, three, four faces. And we can do that because the octahedron, the tetrahedron, and the icosahedron all are made of triangles. And so we only need our three shapes to make our five platonic solids. So you can see here that we've used some different colors and some different patterns on the paper to add some color to our activity. Mm -hmm. And we can use even white paper if we wanted to, and the students could draw their own designs on the faces. Perfect. So it seems like once we add some string to our ornaments, we will be able to hang them up and have a great creative addition to our classroom. Yeah. So let's get folding.